Okay. So let's talk about the smaller, faster, and more efficient devices. So again, I sort of have this timeline of all these different types of packages. There's, there's uh, as many different types of um, packaging solution as there are devices on the market. Really, they are so varied, and all of them can be very different, some very simplistic all the way to the very complex. I'm going to show you three today that are kind of the most common uh, state-of-the-art ones being used right now. This is a 2.5D IC, so 2.5D um, integrated circuit. Um, sort of the, the point of the 2.5D uh, IC is the use of this interposer. An interposer is just a slab of silicon that we use as sort of a main point for connecting all of these chips. So remember I talked about sort of integrating different chip components, so having um, logic chips, memory chips, power chips, kind of all being able to come together. So that interposer acts as sort of your, your base. My team often likes to refer to these as like Legos. So that is your Lego base, and then you're going to come in and click on all of your different actual component pieces. Um, and your interposer is basically there as your connection point into your package substrate or your PCB. Um, and it starts to utilize something called the through silicon via. So I talked about that a little bit. And basically um, what this is, is we etch a uh, hole through the actual silicon substrate or the interposer. So you etch a deep hole all the way through it and you plate it up and build it up with metal. And that is now replacing all of these external wire bonds and all of those external pins that you needed. You have power directly where you need it to go. You're moving the electrons exactly where you want them to go in a much faster and efficient way because the path is uh, shorter. So you do utilize RDL in order to connect all of these dies into the interposer. Um, and then the interposer itself will, has the TSVs that connect to the package substrate or the PSV. Um, and again, I think I'm hoping you can see how sort of Packing these together allows you to make smaller devices. And again, those, those shorter interconnects really help us with lower power and the speed. Okay, this is an embedded multi-die interconnect bridge or an EMIB. This is a, sort of an Intel specific package. This is sort of their uh, flavor of 2.5D IC. Um, so in the 2.5D IC, you'll notice that the interposer is a, quite a large slab of silicon. Silicon is expensive. Um, Intel's uh, proposal, um, what they're working on now, is to use an embedded uh, silicon substrate within the, the sort of, or sorry, embedded silicon bridge within the substrate itself. So you can see it will utilize a lot less silicon. You need a much smaller piece of silicon in order to do the connection. And again, if we think about this sort of like a Lego, um, when you're stacking Legos, if you're making a Lego wall, you often offset the Legos, right? So you put one, you offset, put the other one, offset. That offset is basically what they're doing here. So they're using that base Lego, which is your bridge, in order to connect those two die to. And then you can use these little silicon bridges to connect as many die as you want to. Um, so again, this is sort of utilizes these smaller pieces of silicon. So less silicon, lower cost one of Intel's favorite uh, phrases, lower cost. Um, and so also I want to um, emphasize something, which is the number of size in the chips is not limited to what you can fit on an interposer. So a high quality interposer also has its limitations of how big you can make them. Um, this is not going to be limited to that because again, you can build as many of these bridges as fit into your substrate. Okay, and then this is sort of the most sophisticated of the three, and this is the 3DIC. Um, so this is a three-dimensional integrated circuit, basically. So now we start to look at not only the uh, horizontal integration, so we're not only connecting chips of different functionality next to each other on some type of a common base, but we're actually stacking them directly on top of each other. So again, um, just like an apartment building, you take up more space for certain in the X, Y direction. And because we're using these TSVs, we can thin the wafers down really thin, so you're taking up a lot less space in the Z direction as well. Um, so these devices are significantly smaller. Um, you can get more functionality per unit area. So again, you don't have memory die, memory die over here, logic die over here. You can now stack them all directly on top of each other. And so again, your, your functionality per unit area is really much improved. 
Again, you're utilizing all of these um, TSVs, nano TSVs, micro bumps, so you can use much smaller uh, solder bumps to do this. And again, everything is getting smaller and more compact. One of the major negatives of 3DIC and what's really sort of preventing part of its implementation right now is the heat management component. So one of the things we're also working on in Brewer Science is there's a whole bunch of materials within here that are not just silicon. There's a ton of organic polymers in here. There's a ton of filled materials in here, epoxies, dielectrics. Moving forward, all of those are going to need to have some capacity to dissipate the heat away from the device. So we don't have, we, we no longer can rely on sort of these massive heat sinks that they put on the, the component at the end. We have to actually embed those all within the, the package itself, or else we're not going to be able to handle the heat that's generated by having so much power, for lack of a better word, in a confined space. Um, so I have here just an example kind of looking at when these types of advanced packages, uh, any of these wafer level packages, were started to be implemented into the technology. So the first we know of that they went into the iPhone was in 2007. That had two um, wafer level packages within it. And then if we kind of like fast forward all the way up here to the iPhone 12, we don't even know how many are in there. Um, it's probably well upwards of, I'd say probably at least 100 um, wafer level packages are within that iPhone. This is kind of an example. So this is, um, you know, kind of a busted open uh, iPhone 7 and kind of identifying where all of those packages uh, are. So I think you'll kind of see, I mean, uh, people who speak this language a little bit better than me, again, I'm trained as a chemist, uh, but kind of the point I want to get across here is that packaging goes into almost every component that's within your device. So your, it's not simply just you know, the memory and the logic, but it's, it's the microphones, it's the port for charging your phone, it's everything. Every part of your iPhone is just filled with all of these complicated packages um, that again, allow the device to work faster, smarter, more efficient. 